Quadratic formula. So we've looked at multiple ways of solving quadratic equations at this point. Okay, we looked at graphing, we've looked at factoring, we've looked at completing the square. Today we're going to look at another method, uh, and that is the quadratic formula. Okay, the quadratic formula is something you need to memorize. I'm not providing it for you on a quiz or a test. Something you need to know, um, in case you don't already know it. As we already know. Any quadratic equation can be written in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And the quadratic formula is based off of standard form. And here it is. So notice here, as we've mentioned before, there's typically two solutions for a quadratic. That's why you see the plus or minus here. One of them will be plus to figure it out. One of them will be minus. If you're very, if you're, if you're curious about where this comes from or how this is a thing and who invented it or whatever, okay, all you, all you, it's in the book, so you can look at it. I'm not going to take time in class to go through it. But basically, what they did is they took the standard form of an equation and they solved it by completing the square. So if you take this equation without any numbers, just a, b, and c still left as the coefficients, and you solve that by completing the square, you would get this. Okay. Isn't that b, y? No. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, honestly, uh, I would encourage you to look at that proof, that solution in the book. Um, particularly those of you who have a significant mathematical interest beyond just math class, it's kind of cool. Um, obviously, this equation is it's pretty complicated, it's sort of far out. And if you look at how you solve this using complete and square, it's sort of a cool little proof. Anyway, all right, let's get to the nuts and bolts. First of all, let's just we're just going to do a problem. We'll get right into it. Okay? So, obviously this is a quadratic. The highest power on the variable is a 2 squared, which makes it a quadratic. Okay? And we're just going to step it through, show you how to solve it. How many raise your hand? How many remember using quadratic formula before? Okay, good. All right. So, first thing, what do I got to have? Nine on the other side. Why? What does that do? Yes. What are we doing though? Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, we're making one side equal zero. There it is. Okay. So that's the first step. We got to make sure one side equals zero. So this is again when we when we went through it. There's a couple situations. We talked about solving using square root property where one side wasn't zero. We talked about completing the square when one side wasn't zero. Those are the only cases where that happens. Every other case, we want one side to equal zero. So here is my equation now in standard form. Just bring 9 over, subtract the 9. Next move is to identify what a, b, and c are. Okay? want you to write this out. This is one of those things where I know you feel like you can skip some steps and you're cool and all that, but I'm telling you, it's one of the best things to do is to actually write out what A, B, and C equal because oftentimes as you're working through the formula, there's, there's opportunities to make sign mistakes. And if you've identified A, B, and C incorrectly, particularly for me, and if I'm grading one of your tests or something, then I can say, oh, okay, they had the B wrong, and so the, but they follow the rest of the process right, even though their answer is wrong. It works out good because I can follow your work. I can say, all right, you get the concept, but you messed up a little sign here or there, and you've demonstrated you get it, but we got to be a little more careful, okay? That's what I mean by identifying A, B, and C. 
Am I going to take points off if you don't write that down on your test? No. But I'm, I'm telling you. I'm trying to give you something to help you. If you write it down, it's going to help guide you. Notice here, I pulled the minus sign and I turned it into a negative. Keep those signs with the coefficients so that your positive and negative signs stay current. Okay? All right, why don't you go ahead and try to plug it in? I know some of you already jumped ahead and started working through it a little bit. If you haven't already plugged it into the formula, do that now. Okay, one of the other things I want you to keep in mind, when you solve using quadratic formula, there's a couple things you want to you wanna pay attention to. Um, in this problem, I didn't give you the directions, but if it says give me an exact solution, that means you simplify what's under the radical as best as you can. If it says round to the nearest hundredth, that means you're going to take what's underneath the radical and you're going to plug it in the calculator. Okay, just it's the same sort of concept as what we were doing with completing the square. The, the directions will guide you as to whether or not you plug the square root into your calculator or you simplify it down as a radical. Okay. All right, it looks like we're at the point of setting it up. In case, so take a look up on the screen, those of you who are working through it already, just make sure that what you have set up is what is on the screen. If that is not what you have, you're going to end up with a wrong answer, okay? If you write this part out, oftentimes I can help you and show you and guide you and be like, look, here's where you went wrong. Here's where your issue was. But if you don't write this out and you skip a bunch of steps, I'm not going to take the time to go through and try to figure out your thinking. It's, it's incumbent upon you to show me your thinking by showing your work. Okay? That's where it's really important. Notice here, okay, the, in the equation it's always minus 4ac. So if a or c, oops, how did that happen? If A or C are negative, this is essentially going to turn into plus. Now, if A and C are negative, then it's going to stay minus because you've got three negatives. Okay. So when you simplify what's underneath the radical, you basically get 144 plus 36, which is 180. Okay. Notice obviously I multiplied this out. Now, in this case, we're going to simplify the square root of 180. It's not a perfect square, so that's where we're talking about plugging it in and figuring out what it is. Okay. Okay. So square root of 180, 13.42. In general, when we work with quadratics, round to the nearest hundredth, two places. Question. All right. So at this point now, I'm going to separate my plus and minus. Okay. Because I really want to take care of the top before I divide it all by 2. So notice here, I got negative 12 plus 13.42 divided by 2, negative 12 minus 13.42 divided by 2. So I'm almost there. So this gives me 1.42 over 2, negative 25.42 over 2. So then my final solution. 0.71 and negative 12.71. Raise your hand if you had those two answers. Very good. Are there any questions about how to do this? Okay. Show more work rather than less work. Okay. Bless you. All right. A couple other things that we need to talk about in this section. At the at the very beginning, we we talked about the discriminant. Okay. The discriminant. Here's what the discriminant is, okay? The discriminant is just the b squared minus 4ac part. So what's underneath the radical? That's what the discriminant is, the part that's underneath the radical. Okay. Here's what the discriminant is good for. It tells us, before we even get into the problem, 
what kind of solutions I'm supposed to have. Okay. What was the discriminant of the last problem? Do you remember? I mean, look at your notes. Alex? Just the 180 part. Yeah, just 180, okay? It's, it's without the square root, just the b squared minus 4ac. So the last problem, the discriminant was 180. Okay, and actually that would tell us something about the solutions for that problem. First of all, if the discriminant is negative, in other words, I end up taking the square root of a negative number, I have two complex solutions. Imaginary. I'm going to have imaginary numbers because we can't take a square root of a negative. So if I have a negative under the square root, then that tells you, it tells us several things. One, it tells us that I'm going to have imaginary numbers. Two, it tells us that if I was going to look at the graph, it wouldn't ever cross the x-axis. There are no x-intercepts. This is either above or below the x-axis. So that, that if that discriminant is negative, that gives us some information. Okay? If the discriminant equals zero, it basically takes the plus or minus out of it. Right? Because plus or minus zero is the same thing. So instead of having two solutions, I only have one rational solution, meaning it can be written as a fraction. It's a real number. real and it's rational. It will be one of those, when we looked at the graph, it's, we'd, be, we'd be considered a double root. It's going to touch the x-axis at the vertex. The vertex lies on the x-axis. There's one solution, one rational solution, one real rational solution. And then, of course, if the discriminant is positive, then you get two real solutions, like the problem that we did. We got two real solutions. Now we can extend this a little bit. If the discriminant is positive, you get two real solutions. If the discriminant is a perfect square, meaning, because again, we're talking about the number underneath the radical. So if the discriminant is positive and it's a perfect square, that's going to simplify. Right? That square root is not going to be a decimal. We're not going to have to estimate. We're not going to have to do anything like that. that. That perfect square underneath the radical is going to turn into a, to an integer, okay? to, a, to, a, to a whole number, natural number. Okay? Which means I'm going to have some number plus or minus another whole number, which means it's going to simplify down and it will also be rational. Okay? So if the discriminant is also a perfect square, in addition to being positive, it's positive and it is also a perfect square, then those two real solutions are rational. So in a case like that, if the discriminant was a perfect square, we would say it had two real rational solutions. Okay? Or you could just say two rational solutions because all rational numbers are part of the real number system. So it allows us, the discriminant is called the discriminant for a reason. We are allowed to determine, discriminate, what types of solutions I'm going to get. And we can put them into one of these really four categories. Okay. There's, there's these three, but then I have a subcategory of this second one, or the third one, excuse me. Okay. Questions about that? We're just going to jump in with a couple examples, okay? And the problems that you're going to be um, doing tonight or today are like what I'm going to put on the board here in a second, on the screen in a second, okay? All right. So here's the type of problem you're going to see. If you want to take a picture of this, that's fine, rather than writing it all out. Um, if you want to write it all out, that's fine, too. So go ahead and do this, all right? So... Find the value of the discriminant. So all you're doing is finding the b squared minus 4ac. And then based off of what you get for the discriminant, you're going to go back and look at those notes, and you're going to put it into one of those 
four categories to make a determination of what the solutions are. We're not actually finding the solutions here, okay? When they ask you to use the discriminant, find the value of the discriminant, we're not looking for the solution of the actual equation. All we're looking for is what types of solutions there are, okay? And I realize when that you can punch this right into the calculator, okay? I still want you to write it out before you do that, okay? And again, you don't need to write out the whole quadratic equation to do this. All you need is the b squared minus 4ac. You don't need a radical. You don't need a plus or minus. You don't need any of that. Just b squared minus 4ac. That's all you need. Let's see. Here's what you should have gotten. Here are my solutions. So notice here, for the first one, you should have gotten the discriminant is negative 19. The only thing I had to do is b squared minus 4ac. When the discriminant is negative, that means if I were to plug it in the quadratic formula, I would have a negative under the square root, which we already know is sort of bad to have, uh, but it means we're dealing with imaginary numbers. So because the discriminant is negative, there are two complex roots. How many had that? Okay, good. For the second one, the discriminant ended up being zero which means there is one rational root. The plus or minus then sort of, and the radical don't even apply anymore because plus or minus zero. So for all intents and purposes, when the discriminant is zero, the solution is negative b over 2a. Yeah? Isn't that a perfect square zero? Zero? Oh, I know what you're saying. A binomial square. Yes, it is a binomial square. So, right. Um, what Alex is saying, and so this is the other thing. If you recognize that this was actually x plus 11 squared equals 0, that also tells you there's one, re uh, one real root, x equals negative 11. If it asks you to find the discriminant, this is what you need to do, though. Okay? Question? Uh, you don't have to. You, I need this, and I need that. I don't need the whole complete sentence, comma, and all that. We are, obviously, we know whether a number is negative or whatever. Okay? Any questions? Any other questions before you get going on it? All right.